Hi, this is John Blyler, Editorial Director for IoT Embedded Systems. And today I'm talking with Ron Lohman, IoT Strategic Manager for Synopsys. Um, Ron, IoT means uh, lots of different things to different folks. But we, let's talk about what it means to the SOC designer and what are specifically, what are the challenges associated with that? Yeah, so for Synopsys, first we had to define what IoT really meant, and, and uh, we weren't going to focus on uh, IoT as uh, based on cloud computing or the aggregation layer. We really wanted to focus on the things. So we went out and asked our customers what their major issues were and really got down to four components. Uh, first, obviously, they had to add connectivity. It needed to be interoperable. Uh, with that, there's uh, vulnerabilities uh, for hackers, and so security has to be added. Um, beyond that, there's a lot of new sensor processing uh, in it being added. Uh, with these three major components, that builds a huge challenge for designers uh, to design a very um, energy efficient solution. And so that's one of the major hurdles that uh, uh, we're trying to, to help our customers solve. And, and how, is, how is Synopsys positioning themselves for that? There's some pieces in there that maybe sound kind of new to the mix. Yeah, we really felt that we needed to make major investments to address those design uh, hurdles. Um, so we made uh, major um, investments in re-architecting, optimizing, and even acquiring new IP to address uh, those challenges. And, and what were some of these? What were some of the uh, companies, the IP? So we, we acquired both security and um, Bluetooth IP. But mm. before that, we really needed to understand which process technology nodes uh, that IP needed to be ported to. So uh, if you look at the industry, you see a lot of new ultra-low power process nodes. In particular, our customers are telling us 40 and 55 nanometer are extremely popular. Um, and, and so we needed to port our IP to that those nodes. But beyond that, we really need to re-architect and optimize the IP. Um, so uh, we've made major investments there. And and what does that mean exactly? I mean, the re-architecting, what are you looking at or what had to be done? Yeah, so um, from a re-architecting standpoint, we started with memories and logic libraries to support uh, near threshold voltage levels. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can support down to 60% VDD NOM on our logic libraries. Um, we've uh, backported our learnings, um, in particular on our USB, uh, from more aggressive technology nodes like 28 back to 40 and 55 and, and leverage those learnings to optimize for die size. And, and power. Um, we've uh, added new features to existing IP, such as um, our, our very popular data converters uh, are now up to 14-bit resolution and five mega samples per second conversion rates, um, as well as uh, adding new products, such as our USB 1.1 controller, um, in addition to the security and Bluetooth we mentioned before. Uh, and these are all, how are these all tied together? So I mean, what I mean is the integration now becomes an important part as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we are, beyond uh, the IP offerings, we have subsystem offerings, in particular our sensor and control subsystem. Um, uh, and these things not only uh, integrate and tightly couple memories and, and serial peripherals such as SPI and I2C, they add hardware acceleration to the system, but they also accommodate um, uh, additional integrations such as our double EEPROM products and our, our data converter products mm -hmm. that can be tightly coupled to these subsystems. You, you had mentioned uh you know, uh, co-processors, processors in there, and that, that's a, to me, that's a key point because you've get a, you, there's a lot of uh, people that will be adding security and wireless connectivity to their devices, and they'll be tempted to maybe, you know, overclock or run an emulator or something. Uh, yeah, a lot right. of developers will take their existing platform and overclock when they add connectivity and security. Um, uh, but we really feel that there's there's uh, uh, additional uh, ways to solve that that by adopting more efficient processors, adopting hardware accelerators, or adopting uh, subsystem methodologies for their design. There's there's just one more piece we haven't talked about, and that's the the software. And I know. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, Synopsys had done at least one acquisition in the software space. Tell us how that fits into this, this mix. Yeah, well, beginning with our security IP acquisition, uh, we did get uh, um, encryption software libraries uh, as well as um, security middleware uh, offerings. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, drivers uh, available for sensor and control subsystem. Uh, we have MQX uh, as an RTOS, but we've also uh, worked with third-party um, vendors such as Sensory for Voice um, recognition applications, and, and many others in different application spaces. Beyond that, we've introduced our, our um, Embark open platform 
uh, initiative, which is, is open source software starting from drivers and operating systems uh, popular in IoT such as FreeRTOS and Contiki, as well as the support for the IoT protocols that are necessary to connect to the cloud, be it mm -hmm. CoAP or MQTT. Well, Ron, you, it sounds like you're bringing a broad set of IP to the, to the table, or shall I say platform. It really does sound like you're developing a, a platform here. Yeah, absolutely. We have um, really the most comprehensive uh, set of IP directly uh, targeting IoT on the market today. Um, and with that, we are actually um, working on developing a, a 40 ULP uh, platform that accentuates that IP, uh, pulls that together so customers can benchmark uh, power, performance, and area uh, versus uh, existing or competitive offerings out there. And we feel very confident we have a great solution. Very good. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching.